I would say, well met, brother, but I cannot shake off the needle itch of dread. Is something wrong? I followed the abbot here, kept him in my sight. But the monks, his servants, I have seen nothing of them. Dead? I do not think so. But there is no good here in this grave hush. And where is the abbot now? In his quarters. Come, and be on your guard. Does this have the stench of betrayal to you, brother? Why would the godly shepherd ally with the heretic? Kinnebed is a man who craves power and position. With Tedman dead, he must find it somewhere else. There is truth in that. Keep your eyes and blade sharp. Cunnebert, your guests have arrived. Come, supper's ready. The dear abbot sent me a warm invitation, said my friends were eager to meet with me. It's early for supper, I know. But Kinnebert's ale goes so well with roasted lamb and cinnamon blueberry peas. I couldn't resist. Where is my brother? Is he... is he not here? Mon Dieu, I never told him. Kill her, and we'll never find Sigurd. Sit, Ava. Eat. And let me tell you the tale of a man who talks with gods. You mock me. I have killed for much less. Of course you have. Isn't that the way of this ugly world? We call the sheep and thin the flock as we see fit, you and I. Most who walk the earth are little more than talking blood bladders. Wasted flesh. But not Sigurd. Sigurd is something else. Sigurd has been touched. He is deified. The gods, they speak through him. You lured him in with that lie. Your words are bile and blight. You should have listened, Avar. I tried to tell you. The gods are real and their power is within our grasp. <laughs> You will never find him. Not till I have had my fill. To old friends. This really is delicious, Kinnebert. Is it cloves I taste? Well, that concludes supper. Kill them, and bring their bodies to my sanctum in Canterbury. They will be upon us soon. Maybe there is another way out.
fakes. Fulke let slip that her sanctum is at Canterbury. She did. And with no cause. I'd approach the place with caution. It may be a lie. It may be, but it's the only lead we have. I hope all this innocent sacrifice is worth the trouble. It's Sigurd, my brother. Of course it is. Then come. Let us dive into the Maw of Death. I was never keen on seeing my winter years. This will not be for nothing, Eivor. We will find Sigurd. It's not just him. I want Fulke to suffer. This land of summer, mists and forests, dreaming darkly. I see secrets, and I want to know England. All of it. And yet it rounds on us at every turn, snarling like a cornered dog. I begin to despair of ever settling here. Perhaps the stars light your path, and you will never have a home here. Do you miss the land of your birth? I have long been away. But it is fiercely beautiful beneath the vanity, arrogance, and pettiness of men. I should like to see it. You could if you wish. My father was an art, a builder of wonders. The great Moscow Samara, his master. played the Caliphate's game better to the credit. He was exiled and died in poverty. Your faith sours. What of loyalty? Shared stories round the hearth. Warm nights, bodies, and the tender love of another. There are some who are worthy. A scant few that tower above the solid mass. Men and women of vision and valor. Sigurd is one such man. He is. Fulke isn't wrong on that score. I fear for him, Basim. I cannot rest until he's free. Nor will I, my friend. The practice of learning has waned considerably in England since the days of the Romans. What books they still have, they keep locked away in their churches, hidden from the eyes of common folk. Thralls and shells cannot read. What would be the point? They could learn. The church could teach them. So much of human history would be open to them. Aristotle, Pythagoras, Euclid, ancient knowledge lost to all but a few hard-headed men of the cloth. You have studied these works yourself. In my youth, I was consumed with a passion for understanding. I spent many hours a day in the House of Wisdom. a day in the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. A seminary. A great library, full of the greatest learning of mankind. For a boy seeking answers, it holds many riches. One day, I was sitting cross-legged, devouring a study by the great astronomer al Khwarizmi. With the swiftness belying his years, the papers were plucked from my grasp by the great man himself. His presence stole my voice. He was kind and open-hearted. 
He showed me such scientific wonders. And what did you learn there? Calendars and the calculations same, placing the messy. sun, moon, and five planets. Equations that crackled and sparkled with divine intelligence. I asked the great man, is this what it is? This place swarms with his people. Sigurd will be well guarded. Caution and subtlety should be our path. Ready. Follow me. Fates us, cocksure and arrogant, but she cannot see failure in her path. Her fearful wit would say otherwise. Hey, can't do this alone. If she's still here, we'll burn this Christ house to the ground. For the honor, for the glory of the ancients, do not let these infidels find its secrets. Two arms, madam. So well to push it in like an arm. This must be the way to full case sanctum. Then let us go. What does it mean, these word tangles that speak of elves and demons? The plans to the great fortress in Wessex. Is there something here we can use to breach it? By Odin, this is a sick tapestry she wove. For every drop of his blood she spelled, I will take a mead horn more. Details on the Order of the Ancients. Fulke ranks high among them, but it's not their head.
can use. I may have a fortress in Sussex. The order trained soldiers there. We must be sure. Secret is running out of time. Anything else? Documents of interest to the Hidden Ones. Hytham will surely want to look. But for Sigurd, Porchester is our only lead. Hmm. If he is in Porchester Castle, we'll need a massive army to crack its walls. I have many friends in England now. If I call on them, they will come. They will. Bassem. She severed his arm clean off. Can a man survive such a loss? Physically, he can. Mentally, it's hard to say. So much stress can drive a man to despair. If you suggest he might take his own life as Tedman did, banish that idea. I must tell my people at the settlement that their Jarl remains a captive. They will not take it well. We will not fail again, Eivor. I'll scout ahead and send word to the settlement when I know more of Porchester. Be ready. Good day. What is your name? I am Eivor, of the Raven Clan. And are you a flighter? When the mood strikes, do you wish to flight with me? Oh, no, certainly not. I don't engage in such things. Haven't a head for it. My brother, however, he is quite proficient. Ah, then you wish to compete with me? I should mention, my brother has taken a strict vow of silence. If you wish to flight, I will translate and relay his verses. I think I understand. Good. Hark! To those gathered round, wave your hands and rejoice. I shall trounce this poor fool without use of my voice. Such is his challenge. Do you wish to face him? I'll happily challenge you. Sorry, him. Here you are, my bet. Good. Now remember, it is not me you are flighting. I am but a conduit for his words. I will keep this well in mind. Good. He is ready. Come you closer, friend Eivor, and lend me your ear. The most cutting of flights from my mouth you'll not hear. But by proxy I'll call you a milksop and boor. Though you speak through another, your flighting's still poor. Your body is withered, your garments absurd. I'll topple you over with nary a word. I'm devoted to flights, though to silence avowed. Though you choose to be quiet, your folly is loud. Oh my! Your visage is ghastly. I'm cowed by your stink. I should like to write more, but you're not worth the ink. So, a last parting phrase. You're as dim as they come. With such drivel to speak, I see why you keep mum. Very fine work. As an impartial observer, I must say, you won. Thank you. My brother has a few parting words. 
You have bested me squarely and thus won the day. So take what you've earned now and hurry away. I will. Farewell to you both. Alcadesia will want this. Over. Let's get you to Valka.
Challenge. like a lame hen. I'm the one with the broken leg. At least crap. Someone is stuck. My brother, chasing some foolish legend that if you see old Hisser from above and catch his tail, he will grant you a wish. And what of your leg? Likely sprained, trying to climb up to rescue him. <laughs> we are a sorry pair. like a laying hen. I'm the one with the broken leg. At least grab old Hisser's tail while you're up there. Nothing is hissing. Jormund got our strength. But there's snakes up here too. All right, all right. Well, you'll have to get down somehow. Do you see a haystack or something? <laughs> a haystack? Are you mad? From this height? That's for your death. <laughs> Hold it, 
But how is a big, strong horse like yourself afraid of heights? And snakes! I don't know how I let my brother talk me into these schemes. I think I just give in to his endless scolding. But I'm sick to the back teeth of him. Climb up on it. Go in that cave of wolves on it. Eat that red mushroom. Siblings are a source of great joy and equal misery. I too have a brother. Does yours put you in the moor of death every opportunity he gets? Come, let's get you down, and perhaps you can tell him how you feel. Talk of my feelings to my brother? I would rather let the snakes gnaw on my tender parts. This way? It's too hard to get down from here. <laughs> There, the ladder. Watch your step. Which way now? This way? There! Another slithering devil waiting to get me. Thank you, stranger, for bringing this waste of breath back to me. You're welcome. But what is the story you spoke of? Old Hisser? A pretty legend. He who catches Old Hisser's tail will find her heart's wish granted. I found such a story in a manuscript up in the tower. Then may it bring you more luck than it did us. Maybe you will even solve the serpent's mystery. Farewell. May Odin litter your path with riches. Goodbye. Keep each other safe. For a good brother is the truest treasure from the gods. Now see, you big lump. All that wailing, it was as easy as a hop and a jump. <laughs> Keep that up, and I'll leave you here for the wolves. <laughs> oh. No. Look at your leg. Is it truly broken? No, sprained is all. But I'd like to see you. What happened, little one? Mummy's ring! I just took it out to look at it, and a mean bird snatched them off me. What were you doing with your mother's ring? Someone borrowed it, and she asked me to get it back. But now it's up in that tree, and I can't climb that! There is the bird's nest. Maybe I could hit the nest with something, knock it down. Something fell from the nest. Here you, take your hands off my property! That ring is mine, give it back I say! 
Are you the girl's mother? Stepmother! My husband gave me that ring. My stepdaughter stole it from me. She's been a plague to me ever since I married her father. When all I've tried to show her is kindness. She says you borrowed it from her mother. Her mother is dead. Oh, perhaps it did belong to her once. I didn't know. Your new husband gave you his dead wife's ring. We don't have much. I will not spurn a gift from a good heart. He's a fine man, and I love him, dear. But his daughter will never love me. Not while she still pretends her mother's alive. Let the girl have the ring. It is all she has of her mother. Do this, and new bonds may grow between you in time. You are wise, stranger. It is hard to give it up, but it belongs to her more rightfully than I. Take it to her, please. I have your mother's ring. Be careful in future. We should hold tight to what is precious. I saw you talking to my stepmother down there. Did she try to take it off you? What a warty old dragon. She agreed that you should have it. Be kind to her, little girl. She's trying her best for you. I suppose. I'll speak to mother about it. Farewell, then. If the bees bother you, boy, maybe do not stand so close to their hive. But I need honey. Just a little. It's for my friend. It's all she likes to eat. I've tried poking it with a stick, but it riots them up something chronic. She's so gentle and kind, but if she doesn't get her honey, I don't know what will happen. My friend loves honey. She has a very sweet tooth. <gasps> I only want to scrobble a little. They have plenty to share. <gasps> you got the honey? Oh, thank you. Oh, that looks delicious. Leave it on that rock and she'll be right along. is just over there by the tree. Hurry before she comes. <laughs> Come sit and wait with me. She'll be here soon. Winifred looked after me ever since mother and father died. She's my best friend. The other children tease me. Sometimes they throw stones to shoo me away and call me the grubby watcher in the woods. Winifred saved my life. I was curled up on the grass praying that God would take me too. 
And she scared the wolves away. There you are, Winifred! I got you honey! Winifred, my bestest of bears. Any day spent with you is my favorite day. So today is my new favorite day. This kind stranger got you some honey. What do we say? Thank you. All that honey must have given you quite a thirst. Are you really all right out here on your own, little one? Silly. I'm not alone with the very best of bears by my side. Goodbye, and thank you. Come on, Winifred. Shall we walk to the lake? Maybe we can splash in the reeds. A strange fellowship. But then friendship can often be found in unexpected places. Travel widely to become wise, for all things are too easy at home, and the ignorant who sit among wise men will be mocked. Hey, my boy. Sigurd. He... he's alive. But not with you. Where is he? Dag, not now. I need to speak with Ranvi. You never found him, did you? Tell us, Eivor. We deserve the truth. I need to speak with Ranvi. Step aside, now. You never found him. Because you didn't look. <clears throat> I see you, Eivor. I know what you are. Eivor, you come alone. I fear what that means for Sigurd. I... I could not find him. That madwoman Fulke, she... She slipped away, took him to Sussex. We need an army. Call on our alliances, remind them of their oath to me. We must act before... Before... Before what, Eivor? She tortured him, Ranvi. Did unspeakable things. Severed his arm and left it as a gift. I fear she means to kill him. Slowly. 
gods. Stop there, Wolf Kissed. This ends now. Dag, turn around and walk away. Your habits are not my own, Eivor. I do not flee responsibility for the sake of my glory. I stand firm with my people. For many months, I have stood at your side, keeping faith in Sigurd's judgment. Because I believed in him and his vision. Do as Eivor commands, he told me. And I have. Against my better judgment, I did as you have asked me. And where has that left us? Without a Jarl? Without a purpose? Watching you chase glory around this land like a spooked hare! You could have come to me in confidence, Dag, but that offer is gone. I have no need of it. My mind is fixed. Hear me all! I challenge Eivor for the leadership of this clan until Sigurd is safe home. Walk away, Dag. No! We fight to the death. You spew nonsense, Dag. This is absurd. Enough! Let the circle be made! And make a goblet of your skull! This does not need to happen. A coward to the last. Have courage, Eivor. I will make it quick. I do not want to do this. Walk away. Do. I would grant you exile. Leave this place, but go with your life. Spare me your pity and fight! So be it. You leave me no choice.
You see where it's gotten you? Silence! He forced my hand. Yes, and the cost of disrespect is death. You said it yourself. All he demanded you gave him, that should be enough. I have no need for one so fragile in my hall of heroes. He fought for what he believed in. Does that not count for something? Does it? You killed him all the same. What is the true cost of disrespect? The choice. Lies with you. It should not have come to this old friend. Take this and fly to Odin's Hall. Whatever you sought in this life, may you find it in the next. Go to your homes. I will lay him to rest. Go to your homes! Dag accused me of betrayal. He accused me of breaking my oath. And this... This is the answer I gave him. Now you will hear the truth unvarnished. None, none more than me wishes for Sigurd's safe return. You know this. You know this. All of you! And I will burn the fields and dredge the rivers of Wessex to find him. That, that is my oath. That is my oath. We'll find Sigurd. You will not be without your Jarl. This I promise. Dag, you lived as you died, proud and defiant. I cannot begrudge you for that. I miss hearing you tell your stories, old friend, but I remember them well. 